<laughs> hey everyone, I'm teen writer Noah Barfield, author of that incredible, amazing action fantasy novel, Legend Land. God, there's so much singing. This might turn into a musical one day. I mean, anyway, um, Legend Land is on Amazon now, and I'm going to be providing a link for it in the description below. Or, alternatively, you can just click here! Either one works, so take your pick, then check out my novel. Now this is Writer's Corner, but you already knew that, so let's move on. This video I'm going to be talking about Cliff, wait for it, hangers, cliffhangers. For any of you who got the joke, congratulations. So what are cliffhangers? That's one of the things I'm going to be covering, as well as what the difference is between cliffhangers and other forms of suspense creating things sneak peek, cliffhangers create suspense, as well as what, besides just creating suspense, is the purpose of cliffhangers, and then some of my own personal rules that I have to try and follow to the best of my abilities about cliffhangers. I've been seeing a few videos around the internet about cliffhangers, and I wanted to wait a little while before I did one of my own, but I thought it was high time. So, let's begin. First off, what are cliffhangers? They make you go, ah! Well, I mean, similar to that, really. Cliffhangers are an object used to build suspense. They commonly have a sudden break after a build-up, and they leave you craving and wanting more. You know how seasons end in TV shows, and then you can't wait for the fall to happen, even though everything is really dying? Shows are picking up. So that feeling that you have where you're constantly on the internet, lurking, just trying to find news, about anything relating to that show, that's a cliffhanger that they gave you. Probably. A lot of shows end stuff on cliffhangers. However, books do it on a more minor scale. And by that, I mean we commonly don't end books on cliffhangers. More on that later. So, cliffhangers seem to be just an object of pure torture. You're right, they are. But what's the difference between cliffhangers and other objects of suspense? Like, whenever you have... I don't know, what other objects of suspense are there? Purposefully withholding knowledge, or open endings. What's the difference between a cliffhanger and an open ending? They both leave things unresolved. Not quite. Cliffhangers is a sudden break designed to create some emotional turmoil. You basically rip out the person's heart and then stomp on it a lot as a writer. Then in the sequel, you'll put it back in. But as a cliffhanger, it's more of a sudden break, whereas an open ending just leaves some of the things unresolved, allowing the readers, or viewers as the case may be, to kind of make their own ending for it. They can still piece things together given the situation that happened beforehand, as well as all the details in the novel. They can have the ending in their own mind rather than just a sudden break. It's kind of like wearing something away or just snapping it immediately. So the difference between a cliffhanger and an open ending is a cliffhanger is far more sudden and an open ending gives you some chance of reconciliation with yourself, the author, and the characters. Cliffhangers don't do that. So what is the purpose of cliffhangers besides just torture? Well, they're obviously an instrument of suspense. They create suspense in many different ways, but they also serve as a break. They can serve as a break from many different things because suspense actually gives us a sort of escape. It allows us to escape from monotony. It allows us to escape from a different form of drama. It's a great way to push a story in a new direction or to reveal some sort of knowledge. It's also a good way to get your characters in lots of trouble, which is what commonly happens with cliffhangers. Cliffhangers serve a variety of purposes that don't just all boil down to creating suspense, though that is commonly the main theme of cliffhangers. It's kind of what they're here for. So whenever you're creating a cliffhanger, think about all the different ways that you want to kind of make people die inside. Through suspense. And terror. Cliffhangers are also really great in thriller novels, obviously. You're giving the people thrills. But they're also good in horror novels because, well, you kind of want to drag up that suspense and just build it up as much as you can. And also, the are they alive and are they aren't alive is a classic example of making your heart palpitate and you just don't know what's going on and you're sweating and really anxious, and then it's okay. Or it's really, really not okay. Cliffhangers, in my opinion, have a purpose in almost every single story. They also, in my opinion, work really well in fantasy novels, especially ones that are kind of an epic journey sort of fantasy novel, because it's commonly humanity versus nature in those cases. In which case, you now have the ability to give them natural disasters or natural pitfalls that they have to deal with, including sometimes literal pitfalls. And that's fun. 
So pitfalls is one of the ways that you can give cliffhangers, but it's not the only way, of course. There are many ways you can go about giving cliffhangers, limited only to the scope of your sick, twisted writer imagination. That being said, a few of my personal favorites is right on the cusp of emotional groundbreaking stuff. Right whenever a character is about to experience an emotional epiphany, I like to give a cliffhanger. Not, and not just, are they going to be a good person now? It's more like, oh crap, dragon! But I was about to be a good person, dragon. But you don't know what happens next until you flip the page. Or maybe the book ends there. Some people do that. Now, I also enjoy creating cliffhangers for, I mean, obviously they're an object of uncertainty. But I like doing it whenever things have been certain for a little too while. Like I said, to break up the monotony before as one of the purposes of cliffhangers. Whenever things have been a little too nice, I'm probably going to include a cliffhanger. And it's probably going to be in the realms of kidnapping slash random disappearance. That is one of my favorite things to do. And it's great whenever you have two people in a relationship. One of them can disappear whenever things have been going a little too well for you as a writer. So, naturally, one of them is going to disappear. It doesn't always have to be the princess. It can definitely be someone else. Something else. So now that I've covered some of the different purposes of cliffhangers and what my favorite types of cliffhangers that I use are, what are my personal rules for cliffhangers? I'm glad you asked. First off, they're not constant. You have to keep this in mind. Cliffhangers are not one after another after another. I know some authors, actually I've seen lots of videos of authors who talk about ending every chapter on a cliffhanger. And I personally can't do that. First, I don't write in chapters. I write as a long manuscript and then break them up into chapters later. Second, it's actually really exhausting. And I know this from secondhand experience from many people that I know that ending a chapter, every chapter on a cliffhanger is an exhausting form of writing. It causes you to have to create some sort of suspense at the end of every chapter and thus diluting the suspense. Whenever you end every chapter or every major section of your book with a cliffhanger, it gets predictable. Cliffhangers cannot be constant because suspense cannot be constant, or else someone will have a heart attack and then you have that on your conscience. Congrats, you're a murderer now. But there is also the element of timing. Timing is key, oh my god. You have to time your cliffhanger properly. If you're thinking, oh, well here's a castle, and then boom, cliffhanger, dragons, explosions, missing person. That can work once, whenever you build it up properly, and that is, that's something that you have to keep in mind, is building it up to it. And that's the third thing, actually, that's my third rule, is you have to build up to it. Cliffhangers mean nothing if they happen out of the blue. Yes, they're supposed to take you by surprise and shock you, however, they're not supposed to just blindside you. You're supposed to kind of have an instant over like, oh, I should have expected this, I'm a stupid human. Yes, you are, but it's okay, so is everyone else. Cliffhangers don't just blindside you out of nowhere. They're, you're not expected to be Sherlock Holmes, but you should have this feeling of, I should have seen that coming. Else, perhaps your cliffhanger is a little too sudden and has a little too much cliff, not enough hanging on for the building part of it. Also, you have to make your cliffhangers mean something. That's a big rule of mine. Cliffhangers always need to have an impact which plays into them not being constant. They lose their impact whenever they're constant. My cliffhangers always serve some sort of storytelling purpose, whether it furthers or hinders the storyline or my character's progress, whether it shows something new about my characters, whether it's impatience or patience, whether it shows a certain drive or it makes them break down. It always relates to my characters. It doesn't have to relate to the situation per se, but if you've been building a character arc in the direction of overcoming claustrophobia, having a cliffhanger of them being trapped in a cave after rubble collapse and no one is sure on the outside if they're alive or not, is a great way to not only give your audience some suspense, but have your character deal with a major fear. And that's kind of what I do with cliffhangers, is I have a purpose behind each and every one of them. Even if it's just to torment my readers, it's still a purpose that sometimes drives my characters. Most of the time it drives my characters in some sort of way and I have to put my story first. And that's why cliffhangers are there. Now my last thing and 
this is a little touchy, so I'm not. I'm just gonna kind of gloss over it a little bit. Is if you're going to end your book on a cliffhanger, you have to do it right. And to do it right, you have to follow a couple of smaller rules. First off, if you're going to end your book on a cliffhanger, realize this is a very risky road. Many authors outright recommend to not do it. I second that opinion. It takes a lot of practice and skill to end a book on a cliffhanger, and if you're going to do so, first, you need to have a sequel. You just can't do that to your audience. It's kind of like those TV shows where the season ends on a cliffhanger and you're left wanting more and then you look it up online and you know there's no second season or sixth season. There's no follow-up. There's no resolution. And that's a painful thing to deal with. Also, you have to make sure that there is some sort of resolution in it. The great thing about an open ending at the end of your story is that there is resolution in it somewhere so that you can kind of tie it up in your head. With a cliffhanger, there is no resolution because the cliffhanger is immediate. So, in your build-up process to the cliffhanger, give details and little things to where you kind of twist it into a sudden open ending, rather, so that you have built up some resolution, you have resolved some things with your characters. In, in my stories, whenever I've done cliffhangers at the end of them, I always give some sort of resolution within my characters beforehand, whether they've just accomplished something, overcome something, fallen into the pits of despair, to kind of give you an idea or a projection of where the story is going to go next, so it builds up the feeling of suspense and anticipation, and gives you the feeling of, ah, I need to know more, rather than, I am dead now, I don't know what the point of life is. So those are a couple rules to follow if you're going to end your story on a cliffhanger. You have to make sure some, there's some resolution beforehand. My god, make sure there's a sequel. And additionally, you do have to build up to it. Your story should not just be one build up to a cliffhanger. You should have cliffhangers beforehand. And yeah, you can't have only one cliffhanger at the end. That's not how storytelling works. And if you're going to do that, you need to have a sequel coming out really, really quickly. Now this has been my video on cliffhangers. It's been a lot of talking really, really fast and a lot of energy, which is great and fantastic. I love cliffhangers. They're amazing. I love writing them. They're so fun. I love ending things on cliffhangers, but it's very important for me to follow my own rules because people get angry at me whenever I don't. So these are my own personal rules that I follow, as well as the tips from what I've seen from reading stories and how I felt about cliffhangers and from TV shows, especially TV shows, as well as other writing videos about cliffhangers that I've been watching that give a lot of really great advice, and I definitely recommend watching some of those as well, just to be well-rounded. So thank you for watching. I hope that you all have a wonderful time writing cliffhangers and destroying the hearts and souls of your reading audience. I enjoy doing that as well. So thank you for watching, and continue to enjoy.